for the players. I'm Ryan Betson. I'm Max Kickoff. And this is for the players, the pop culture is PlayStation podcast. Over 40 years of playing PlayStation and 10 plus years, the game's big bump. And I thank you for joining us in this PlayStation conversation. This PlayStation conversation happens every Monday morning at 8 a.m. on podcast services, including Apple Podcasts and Spotify, and 9 a.m. on those YouTubes. If you'd like to pay, take part in future conversations with us, come and check out our socials, Facebook, Discord, Instagram, Twitter. All of those links can be found in the description below. If you want to join the conversation as it happens, head over to twitch.tv slash thepopculturist. We watch us record this show live, where you can jump in the chat and become part of the show. If you want to support the show, you can tell your friends, tell your family about this position pod. If you are uh, listening on podcast services, be sure to give us a five-star rating on a written review. Or if you're watching us on YouTube, be sure to like, subscribe, with comment below. I endeavor to answer every single comment. And if you want to support us financially, you can at patreon.com slash popcultures, as well as our merchandise store, popcultures.com slash shop, where you can buy shirts and other assorted shit with our logos on it. As I was just saying, before, like, as we're recording here live on Twitch, as we do each and every week, uh, it was like, you know, bust out our, our, our A material, me talking about the sweet Anzac biscuits I bought from the shop, uh, and I was munching on just before the show started. Oh, they were good. Like, they were like the good, like, you know, sometimes like, Anzac biscuits can be a bit hard and a bit crunchy. Mm. Nah, these are these, these sweet gooey boys, you know, like, mm, like, you know, like, get the whole, like, the, yeah. Oh. I can't even like finish the sentence because I just thinking about getting more Anzac biscuits. That's it. That's that's it. Thank you very much for the show. We have got nothing else this week. It's quiet week. Yeah, not very it's exciting. Been a real, a real quiet week. Yeah, yeah. Not a whole, like it, it, after like the the fervor that was the FTC stuff last week. It is like really kind of fucking chill because I don't think they got a resolve. No, so it's not getting resolved. Um, they were anticipating the earliest resolution was going to be last wednesday and obviously that didn't happen no. so well, i was gonna say i'm pretty sure it was the wednesday that just went so i was like well that's weird like why nothing because i know they had the again, that, was, again, that was the the earliest it was yeah. going to be done <sighs> so well, that part sucks for them oh i mean it's so not like maybe, nothing maybe else we'll, maybe we'll get some sweet sweet news this week yeah well hopefully yeah like next week should be a bit more exciting something ha- fucking happening but uh, aside from that, how how have you been, Max? Yes, yeah. yeah, fine. Started my new slash old job this week. Yeah, so for those playing at home, Max is doing the exact same job, exact same just for, hours, just, just for, for a different new company. company. New company um, came in, bought the contract, and they went, "We want you." And he went, "All right, do I have to do anything different?" And they went, "No, nah, it's sick." Yeah, so I had to work some overtime on Monday and Friday, but that was all right. That's so Monday, cash. Monday, I had to go back into work just as I climbed back into bed. Like I'd gotten home, seen seen the kid after kinder, and just as I like climbed into bed and like snuggled up, and my phone rang, and they're like, "Hey, are you able to take the delivery?" I'm like, "Yeah, when is it? Now?" I'm like, "Yep." <laughs> so I got in, so back into work. Um. And they're like, you know, you know, just bill us for how long it takes you to drive in and drive home and how long you were there. I'm like, all right, cool. And then on Friday, I had to, had to train train the new guy, show him around the building. Um, yeah, so it wasn't too bad. Same, same shit, different day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what about you? How was, uh, uh, how was your week? No, 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 uh, meme, no meme college this week. No what, sorry? No meme college this week. <laughs> No, <laughs> no, I didn't. Uh, sorry, the the joke there being, uh, I I have you know a big part of my job is making like content now for fa- like social media, and you know I made this joke that I just fucking make memes all day, which is totally not true. But there are some days where I kind of just think about memes all day and like what's cool, engaging shit that I can make. Um, but yeah, so no having to fly to Sydney this week to to do meme training, which which is not what I went there any for anyway. Um, I why I went. <laughs> <laughs> but uh no so no inter- no interstate flights this week uh probably won't be for a couple more weeks i think um yeah but pretty like chillish week i i what the fuck did i do this week uh 
Huh. It's good. Good. Shit, what I did you this week? I honestly don't recall. He, he definitely did work. Oh, work was... stuff by I'm trying to think of like outside of work. Oh, oh I recorded a uh, 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 AEW Fight Forever conversation with Jamie Apps. Uh, so that, that goes up this week. Um, oh, so I'm sure I've talked about it before, but friends, friends of the show, uh, Craig, the Mullet Show, and Paris, my previous boss. Hey, we've we've all known each other for the better part of seven years at this point, right? And one of the things we've been discussing this whole time is like, hey, there's this movie. It's called Hercules Returns. It's an Australian movie from like the fucking early 90s. You gotta watch it. It's incredible. And I'm like, I doubt it, but okay. Like, that's, that's to go. Let's do something. Never happened until this week. So this week, after seven years, we finally watch Hercules Returns, and it's fucking awesome. Are you aware of this film? Who's in it? Uh, uh, who, the plays chick- the titular, who plays the titular Hercules? Well, that's the, that's the gimmick, right? So did you ever see the movie Kung Pao Enter the Fist? No. Okay. Are oh, you that's... implying that no one entered the fist after the movie? <laughs> so the gimmick of that movie is that they, they essentially redubbed and re-edited an old uh, like Kung Fu movie. But okay. this, like that was in like early 2000s. Where this, the story of the show, of, of the movie, is that you know, they open up the cinema, they get a copy of Hercules Returns, but it's in Italian. So they, the three main cast, have to dub the entire movie to essentially a live crowd is the kind of the gimmick, right? Do the whole Foley yeah. all that sort of stuff. And it's like, because it was made in like early 90s, it is just dripping with like Australian humor. And like, it's humor that just doesn't, even really make it to like Australian TV. Like not like it's, you know, not like it's the inherent racism of Australian humor from back in the eighties, but it's just like, it's just got such this tone to it and this delivery to it that like just feels so powerfully Australian. It's actually really, really funny. I would, I would, I think I need to watch it again just cause it's, it's, it's so dumb, so dumb. But the best thing about it, cause the main plot of the story is a guy who works for the board of this big, a big you know cinema conglomerate and the idea being that you know they are the biggest company in the world and they kind of ramp the intensity of like cinema distribution being this big thing so everything feels fucking larger than life and way more serious than it should be mm. and then when they do this movie and like it just it just ramps up in, in its stupidity but so the two male actors they haven't really done much else but the female lead was the woman who's ca- who did the character of Effie. Remember that from back in the day? Yes? No? I couldn't fucking tell you what her real name is. Not not Effie from Skins, I'm assuming. If no, it's no not Effie from Skins. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Effie from Skins was uh, a no, very different character. But Effie in the Australian was this really sort of over-the-top, you know wog character quote-unquote from back in the day um kaya scoldiaro says reverend park reverend park always comes through with a clutch so, so that's not even a character that exists in like u.s entertainment but park has the answer because he knows how to google like a champ but yeah so that was the character that she did like fucking movie's fantastic it's absolutely brilliant speaking of great movies though my son and i watched uh small soldiers again this weekend do you remember that movie max yeah, I remember that game. There, no, I want to point out. That oh, that's that, that's that it's, actress it's, is the skin is the skin's actress. That's not the not the Australian Effie. Uh, different thing, whole different thing. Um, yeah. So I watched Small Soldiers this weekend, uh, which is a movie that I grew up on. I fucking loved. I had the action figures somewhere. I think there might might be in a in a box. But James is like, did you watch this? And I said, I watched this movie growing up. He's like, you did? I'm like, yeah. Was it real? I'm like, no. I have action figures, though, of some of them. Like, do you really? Like, yeah. It's like, you know, I don't believe you. I'm like, well, I don't know where they are, but they're fucking somewhere. And you can play with them and you can have them. Go ahead. So that was fun. Good movie, though. It's been this weekend, though. You and I did some ca- did some outside of podcast catching up, which is very rare and infrequent. Yeah. Yeah, did, did the whole dad weekend thing. Yeah. So, yeah, the original plan was to go to uh, go trampolining on Saturday and then... 
me being me. Mary Costas, that's her name. Thank you, Park. <laughs> me being me, fucking plan ahead. There was some bullshit birthday party. It was fucking packed. Because well, so. it's also the last weekend of school holidays, right? So shit's fucking busy for that reason. The kids are like, parents are like, I'm so sick of my kid. Where can I throw them so they can just fucking not annoy me? We're like, uh, yes, yeah, so we were like, let's go to Bounce, which is a big trombomboline place. But uh, yeah, obviously that was busy. So we went to some indoor fucking kids play park on Saturday. That was that was pretty rad. Kids had a blast. Yeah, our kids get along like really well. Like mind <laughs> you, like what James is six and and Hadley's what Hadley's three? three. Yeah. yeah, which is lovely because like she has you know currently being like an only child, she doesn't really like play with a lot of kids. Mm. But like thankfully James is like super caring and kind of like has her back. So when they're when they're yeah. running around like these big play centers, like James is always looking out for her, making sure she's not too far away or she's not getting stuck. Or yeah, it was good. So yeah. yeah, we did that Saturday afternoon. And then you guys came back here for a bit. The kids mucked around until my child threw a tantrum because she was fucking tired and hungry and cranky and hadn't eaten all day. So that was that was fun. And then today we 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 took two and went went to the trampoline place and yeah. I fucking threw my back out trying to do a front flip. <laughs> oh, I was like, you wouldn't do a front flip. You're fucking scared. And you're like, oh, I do backflips every day of my life. You said, Max. And I was like, why well, don't fucking believe you? I don't think you ever said that to me my, ever. Um, you tried and very similar to me, can't stick the landing. Like the no. inertia of the, because uh, our center of gravity is all jacked up. Yeah. My back uh, hurts. I think my shoulders are a bit rooted. Well, I, I I popped some fucking Panadol when I got home because I had a mad headache from landing on the back of my head. I did wallop my head onto a mat at one point, and I was like, oh, so, that sucks. So that was fun. But yeah, it's all right. Well, my son knows how to front... Like, he's been... He, like, for, he's been wanting to, like, front flip for, like, the longest time. I don't know why it's such a thing for him, but he's been something he's wanted to do forever. And he says, I think he's... Like, he grew up on, like, he's on, like, YouTube with, like, people doing a fucking, uh, uh, you know, ninja shit. Um... Yeah, and then out of nowhere, like, he's been practicing and practicing for, like, literal years. And to this weekend, he nailed it. He was able to get his first ever front flip and landing on his feet and be able to walk away. Normally, he either, like, over, overshoots and kind of, like, land, almost does, like, a superhero landing. Um, or kind of undershoots it and doesn't quite get his leg un, legs under him in time. But, no, number of times, nailed it. What a champ. Absolute champ. But, yeah. Other than that, Good terms. not much to talk about. Nah, no. bug roll. Even games, man. Like, I don't think I've played many games this week or at all. Well, I'll I'll jump in then. I'll kick. I'll get the ball rolling. So obviously, I, I rolled credits for Final Fantasy sixteen last week. Um, so I haven't touched upon it too much since, uh, since starting my um my new game plus playthrough. But what I have been playing a lot of this week is Rogue Legacy Two. Yeah, which I touched upon last week and how it's super rad. Um, so you know, available for PlayStation Plus extra members. It is part of the game's catalog. It is exactly the same as Rogue Legacy. Yeah, game, isn't so it? You, so you know you. As you progress through the game, it's that it's that roguelike where you, you know you go as far as you can, then you buy upgrades to your castle, which uh, you know allows you to unlock uh, new character classes, upgrades their passives, so you know, they, they will become stronger in, in each of their <clears throat> the way in which they play, whether it be intelligence based spells or, or dexterity based attacks, strength based attacks. Uh, so last night I managed to finally beat the first estuary or the first boss of the of the game. I've run into um, him a couple times, haven't been able to nail him yet. <clears throat> I, I basically just got like the perfect roll of characters. Um, what is your preferred so, character class at the moment? Uh, so, uh, it's the it's the exploding spear guys. Oh, okay. So, so not the Valkyrie, the ones that can charge up and fucking fly around the screen. Uh, that or the um. The fencer is really good. The fencer has a dodge roll that just makes you immune to attacks. Ooh. And you always crit when you come out of the dodge roll. Ooh. So you dodge roll through their attack and then fucking shank him. All right. I might have to look into that. Because I've been using the ranger at the moment. Any Anything that I need to aim and shoot, hot garbage. Gunslinger, hot garbage. Ranger, hot garbage. Well, Mage, I'm, I'm, I'm garbage. finding I'm like I'm really good at the ranger. I can be like, what? And like shoot shit, jump in the air. You know, like it's for some reason I've had this just better, better go at it with the ranger. <laughs> um, so I've been playing that. That's that's been my pick up and play a few rounds, getting it out. 
then obviously I'm still playing um still playing DMZ, doing all that stuff. Uh I've been preemptively playing Baldur's Gate three because mm. I bought it like three years ago when it first came out in early access. And uh it is set to launch on the third of August, so we're we're super close. So I'm kind of trying out a few of the classes, seeing which I'm which I'm actually going to play when uh, when the full game launches. Because I've got a few friends who have all purchased it already. We pre-purchased it together, and we're like, once it's once it's out for for real, real, not for play uh, play, for play play, we'll uh, get stuck into it. So I've been doing that. Uh, but other than that, yeah, not too much. Yeah, because like I'm in, I'm in the same boat. Like I haven't done a lot on the PlayStation. I, yeah, I played a little bit of Rogue Legacy. I think I think. Uh, my son and I played a bunch of Sonic Team Racing today because he likes racing games and likes Sonic because he's, I don't know, he's a kid. What else? Um, that's my, my, my bad. Okay, the, one, the only game that I have played, which isn't on console yet, yet, <laughs> is Phasmophobia. So now that I've got my sexy new PC and I was like, what's a game I've always wanted to play? And I looked in my wish list, and because of the, obviously the summer sales are on this this last two weeks with um, Steam, and I was like, oh, Fast and is like 12 bucks. I was like, fuck a, 12 bucks, let's do it, let's run it. Turn, you know, obviously my computer runs it fantastically, brilliant, excellent. And then like in the updates, like coming to consoles in like August, my like, motherfucker, that's like three weeks from now. God damn it. So yeah, I was probably get it. Oh, if it like I'm enjoying it, I'll probably just get it for console. But so I was playing with Ange, um, housemate, and uh, yeah, it was awesome. Like we just kind of went in and tried to you know solve these paranormal things using like <clears throat> you know, EMF readers and fucking cameras, and it it, it was like because I fucking love love those shitty YouTube yeah, ghost really- hunting. And then they crossed the streams and everyone died. Yeah. Oh, it was rad. Yeah. Like, I love, like, YouTube channels like Nukes Top the Nukes top 5 and Chills and Mindhunter. And, like, what, what, what's the fucking, what's the shitty one from Supernatural? Ghost Faces? <laughs> oh, Ghost Faces, yeah. That's, of course, Ghost Faces is fucking Brent. <clears throat> um, but, yeah, so as, as Mute in the chat mentions, the fun part is trash talking the ghost, which we did because the game doesn't register what you're saying. It just registers that you're talking, right? So... <clears throat> One of uh, we were singing. Uh, I don't know was was it? D, I think DJ Otzi was the you know hey hey man, and we just named the person and we were just like just to ping the fucking sound, so we would just started singing at it and then that made it really angry and then it killed me. But I probably shouldn't have sang at it. But like yeah, it just registers that you're talking. So I'm just singing at this thing, making fun of it, just like giving it fucking hard time. Um, yeah, it was really cool because, like, obviously, play- I was playing in a dark room. I had my headphones on, and you know, when you're like, the atmosphere of that game is incredible when you want it to. So, like, you know, we have to be. You know, one of the ghosts was like, you know, it likes to, you know, only like it only comes out when someone's by themselves, and for whatever reason, like, Ange did for a little bit, and then oh, because you have a sanity meter, right? So it's like how sane that you stay. So you, you can't just like just hang out in the house. So he, we had to balance. He's like, look, I'm rooted. You have to go in. So I'm sitting in that corner and like, cause it's dark, he's got to have the light. So I've got like a, I had a dot reader. So there's this green thing to sort of like read it. And it's just like, we got to fucking sing at it. You got to, okay. So like, you know, sitting in this dark corner, singing fucking a song at a ghost and, it, and you see it like scutter across the window and you're like, Oh shit. And then like, you know, there's little things that does just like, you know, it throws things. And cause it's like, it's actually really good sort of 3d audio. So you kind of f- hear it go up and over your head and you're like, Ooh it's it was really fun it's really fun um but yeah because it should be keen for it when it comes to to consoles but if not I'll just plug and play it on pc hey max come play some ghost hunting with me you totally won't i totally won't <laughs> you're right it's too spooky for me yeah <laughs> it's fun yeah no, it, but like it's true like it's like i'm a big big scaredy cat it seems and they, I'm like, I don't want to go inside the digital to, house. One of my friends have been trying to get me to play for fucking ages. I'm saying, I don't think it. I don't think it's for me. Yeah, because it's, it's also a little bit of like problem solving. But the pro, the the challenge is that once you like work out what the identifiers are, solved. Mm. Because obviously there's like a list of ghost types, and if like you know it does it. Is there cold temperatures? Yes. Okay. You know, are there orbs? Does it get X amount of reading on the EMF meter? Did it write in the fucking demon ghost book? 
you know, and like, oh, yeah, tick, tick, tick. Oh, yeah, cool. Well, we've narrowed it down that it's this. And then you just got to fucking skedaddle. It's not entirely like solve it. It's like, oh, I know what it is. Sick. Still. Like, you don't have to try, like, fucking deal with it. So, like, oh, we know it's a demon. So we got to fucking uh, uh, perform a, I almost said autopsy. Um, An exorcism. Thank you. Yeah, it was like, oh, cool. Is this a, hey, there's a demon in your house. <laughs> it's fucking leg it. But yeah. I might, I might play that again this week. I've been trying to get, like, Paris and Craig. Like, that's a four player. Like, let's just go in and fucking the four of us. And, like, it'll be fun. It'll be silly. You know, someone will hide upstairs. Someone will be downstairs. We'll sing a bunch of songs at it. We'll get collectively scared. It'll be awesome. Look, if I need to, you know, look, mute in the chat says, uh, you know, look, if we do play on consoles, they'll be there and they're willing to run into the house for us. So we can just that's come that's dedication. Yeah. So we can just stay in the safety of the truck because it has proximity chat, right? So like, if you're farther away, you can't hear them. Yeah. So like you, so when you're in the house and if you're in the other room, you can't hear that person. So it kind of, you know, even though you know, there's someone there and you know, you're on a party chat, essentially, like, it just feels like there's no one there. And you have, like, a, tch, a little intercom. You go, hey. But, like, the ghost picks up on that shit. So, if they're, like, in their hunt mode, and you're like, I'm oh, fucking scared. The ghost's <laughs> like, oh, you're in the cupboard, and you're all scared. I'm like, oh, no. So, like, you've got, like, ha- yeah, it's, ha- it has good tension. It's very impressive. All right, let's get in the section call and inform the players. We tell you about what happened this week in PlayStation, because, you know. We there's not much There's not much informing to do this week, right? No, it's very, <clears> very, <throat> ooh, whoa, what have I done? There we go pressing buttons um yeah very very low in the inform in the informing space this week so with the revised let's let's kick things off with some revised hardware so some so- good some so- good sony news good sony news uh so f- for the longest time being rumored that um uh, there will be a, a, a P- what is being referred to as the ps5 slim which is the the long rumored uh playstation 5 console with the detail so coming from the um the Microsoft Activision Blizzard nonsense, claiming in court filings relating to the uh, ongoing acquisition uh, attempt that Sony is, quote, expecting to release a, quote, PlayStation 5 Slim and a handheld version of PlayStation 5 in 2023. Now we we know that handheld version of a PlayStation 5 is a fucking screen that... The Project Q, Project Q Lite or whatever, yeah. Yeah. Could this be the long-rumored detachable disk drive PlayStation 5? Yeah, probably. Skip. Yeah, probably. Uh, I believe that they they are even claiming the price of three ninety nine. Yeah, so there you go. So it's going to be cheaper. It's going to be slimmer, and it's not going to have a disc drive in it. And like we know that, like in the multiple iterations of the PS five that they have, like mind you, iterations are just different model numbers. They're kind mm. of slightly different. Like I know some use a different chipset, and that chipset is smaller. So that kind of they're they're allowing there's ways that the the console's getting lighter as well, which for me would be really handy, because trying to fucking cart my PS five when I go interstate. It's like the entire fucking carry-on limit is just my PS5. It's crazy. Check um, luggage, mate. Oh, yeah, I'm not putting my PS5 in checked luggage. Are you shitting me? No, you pay for checked luggage for you, the rest of your Oh, no, I totally do. Check. No, no, they, my work pays for... They give me check check luggage. I put all my everything else in there, and I just take my PS5 on the flight with me. Um, so it's kind of like, oh, okay, cool. But yeah, have, like with the digital future as it is... Like a detachable disk drive is the smart way to go about it because mm-hmm. rather than making two SKUs that one sells really well and one that doesn't, make one, which is the digital one, and you and then you sell the, the disk drive for say fifty bucks US, I guess. I think I think they're I think they're about fifteen to twenty bucks US wholesale. So like really you just pump thirty bucks in that, you're gonna make money or you're gonna in theory come out better, at least per mm. disk drive. And, you know, it's been around, what, three years? We are, like, a, this is the normal from memory, the time that we got a slimmer version. Would I buy a new one? No, because I don't have uh, spare cash to do so. Would I trade? You're already, on your, you're already on your second. Yeah, because my first one, the thermos broke in the first week and I had to get it replaced. Um, if it, like, de- Once again, depending how much lighter it is, I'd, I'd consider it. Because, like, I don't need the... I don't... See, you and I are in a very privileged position. 
we don't play disc games because all our codes we get review codes so like we just constantly fucking keys so i have a disc drive i never use i use my disc drive well i also have a blu-ray player and that's kind of the one thing i have like i use it for mm-hmm. but if it comes to, if it's if it's, if, it's, if, it's, if, it's, if it's substantially lighter i'd consider it a trading mine and getting a slimmer one maybe maybe no i wouldn't because i'm fucking lazy so would you so would you just the idea of a slimmer ps5 like entice you now obviously yours is behind your fucking tv your your monitors and you never move it but uh, no not 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 really um i mean even even in uh i i had a slim ps3 because when i got my ps3 that was the only model available mm. um i did not change my ps4 ever mm. i got a like a launch model ps4 and never never upgrade once i buy something i tend to not trade it in to get yeah. the same thing i don't like i don't trade consoles so like it just seems it just seems not worthwhile like i didn't even upgrade to the pro it's just something that i don't do mm. So and, and I have the space. It's not like I travel with it or yeah. anything like that. So I don't I don't have the need for a slim model. Yeah. So I I have similar to yourself. I do have the PS3 slim. It's up on a shelf over there because I don't plug it into anything. But I've got my fat PS3 over here. And the only reason I have the slim PS3 is because that one yellow light of death, like it, the shit itself, right? Mm. So the only reason I have that, like the PS2, I have the chunky fuck. Even the PS1 is the chunky bastard. I have a PS4 ps4 which i did sell to buy the ps4 pro so i guess that's probably like if i actually went thicker i got the fatter version of the ps4 ah, very nice very double noise big thank you to the mullet show for renewing his tier one sub for his 64th month in a row um yes yeah, so i come in the same boat as you like the slim doesn't tend to interest me but yeah because normally it just sits under my tv now things are slightly different. My circumstances are a little different. So, because in the chat, Mew goes, um, wow, I thought you guys were physical with our games. Now, yeah, once again, the, the privileged position, let's, let's elaborate. So the privileged position that we are in is that, you know, we we get review codes for games. So we very rarely do we have to buy our games, period. And even when we do, you and I just prefer, to, like, I just prefer digital because I'm lazy. Mm. right so i'm like oh you know i, I like I, I i go to eb games occasionally and every time i go there i'm like ugh. Because, i still buy discs because i'm cheap yeah well depending on the one like if it's like i don't buy a lot of old games because i'm always sort of yeah. playing something new yeah. and unless and if it's something we don't get a review code for i'll be like uh like i'll toss it up but i'll normally just buy digital because mm. like, that digital future is the easy for me because like i don't want i hate the idea of like and it's so fucking lazy just getting up and like changing a disc and like as for as for the second comment of ps5 games take a lot of memory space they we do. are also in a privileged position of it takes like fucking 20 minutes to download again yeah for us. so the nature of so in the, the house that max lives in he's it has nbn which is australia's uh high speed internet so you're a gigabit at the moment yeah yeah so you're he That's has a thousand a thousand megabits per second right I live in a different suburb which has HFC, which is high high fiber optic cable, mm. right? I get like 600 to 700 megabits per second, right? So like download speed isn't an issue for us. Like we're like double privileged, really. All that sweet privilege. And we're fucking white middle class males. Boom. Go us. Um, yeah, so I just bought, we just bought extra SSDs for our consoles and that covered the basis. Mm. and like for me it's not much of an issue because i don't play there's no, i don't have forever games where max you do obviously you've got like destiny yeah. and warzone destiny's, destiny's like 140 fucking Oof. gig um one of our one of my one of our friends finally got a ps5 and he's like oh let's let's play some grand theft auto so i downloaded grand theft auto 5 it's 140 gig never fucking played it with him I deleted it <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's like, ah gross yeah. Yes, games are, games are ridiculously large these days. Yeah, we were told like you know, oh, there's new compression and all this, and like fucking liars. Games are bigger I mean, than ever. You, I mean, I mean, you can see the compression because when you when you get a code when when you download a digital version for a cross generation game, 
you can see that the PS5 version is fucking significant. Nah, not always. Most of the time. Um, what I said, it's most of the time it's like, hey, it's like two gigs. I'm like, whoa. Okay, it's better than, better than no gigs, I suppose. Than, Speaking of a game that's probably going to be big when it, when it drops is Marvel Spider-Man 2. So Insomniac Games has confirmed this week uh, that Marvel Spider-Man 2 will have a panel at San Diego Comic-Con on 20th of July, 2023. I don't know why you fucking made San in San Diego bold, but you did. The round table named Symbiotic Relationships, good name, will feature staffers from the Burbank studio as well as actors from the game. So express like, expect like Yuri and shit going to be there. Uh, oh. Nothing is known about what will be shown or discussed at the event, however. My my words in dark mode, so it looks the fucking same as everything else for me because <laughs> the text is white and the background's black. All right, cool, because it's fucking like bold for some reason. <laughs> cool. <laughs> What do you, what um, do you think to come out of this? Ah, uh, there'll be a new fucking trailer. Mm. trailer. I, I reckon, at, like, at the very least, maybe, maybe some like teaser tidbits about what role the symbiotes will play in this game. Yeah, well, seeing as about the symbiotic relationship is kind of the name. Like, I would, I would kind of, if we look at what it could be, I'm expecting maybe a bit more discussion around the the symbiote, as in whether it be Venom as a villain. Or whether it be um, how it affects Peter as the symbiote, but it could also, you know, we know that Craven is there to hunt superheroes, super villains, superhumans. So, like, are we gonna get a bit of a re- reveal of who some of the other villains are? Yeah, let that be Carnage. Yeah, like, hey, you know, we got. Well, man, I don't think they'll spoil Carnage. But that'd be sick, though. They'll be like, hey, you know, like Vulture's still here, fucking Lizard's still here. Oh. You know, we, well, we, we know, saw Lizzie I mean, in the trailer. But you know what I mean? Like, because, you know, when they did that, like, shot of they showed Manhattan yeah. and they're like, bing, 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 bing. Ja- Jamie Foxx's character is going to be there. Yeah, Electro is going to be there, maybe. Like, uh, that's what I imagine they're going to, they might hit, because coming into the first game, they're like, hey, there's a bunch of villains and they kind of tease them all it, a little bit. So we kind of had a lot of fun. Craven's going to hunt the Sinister Six. Yeah, that'd be kind of bad. Just, yeah, like, maybe just more details on Craven. Like, Comic-Con is the best place to talk about a villain like Craven, And especially on the back of the Craven movie coming out real soon. Probably not a bad idea. Yeah. You know? I would imagine that's exactly why they're doing it. Yeah. Uh, Puck in the chat says, probably going hard due to Marvel and the MCU aren't showing up. It's interesting to know that. So this would be the real, only real Marvel's time to shine. It makes total what sense. What does Marvel have to show off? All of their shit's getting delayed because of the writer strike. Yeah. What have they got to show? Nothing. Nothing. They're, they're going to do an AI panel. Um, <laughs> Chat GPT is just going to respond to the questions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I remember back in the day, like, I always dreamt about going to Comic-Con. Now I couldn't think of anything fucking worse. Yeah, Pax is enough of it. <laughs> Pax is enough for me. Pax is enough. Yeah. Oh, speaking of, obviously Pax is back in October. I got my accommodation book, so no living out of my car this Pax weekend. I had a lot of fun last year, like just putting a suitcase in my car and seeing what the where it would take me. Um, it was interesting. I don't want to do it again, so I booked some accommodation. <laughs> Get ahead this time. I, I trained up and back every single day. Yeah, well, that was a bold strategy. So now you just, oh. now just to avoid it, you're going to have a kid pop out around about then. Yeah, yeah. My wife's due around that weekend, so I might not be there at all, but I'm going to I'm gonna try and get there for the Friday at least. Yeah. We'll be around. Oh, speaking of things that may or may not get here. Hey, <laughs> nice one. Um, apparently, development on the third entry in the Last of Us series <gasps> has begun to ramp up with motion capture looking to take place this year, according to Twitter profile viewer Anon, a supposedly a reliable source in the movie sphere. The profile previously posted Neil Druckmann's next game is The Last of Us Part 3 and has now expanded that claim. They claim that Naughty Dog is, quote, rolling cameras and recording audio for motion capture and that Ali is at least as important in The Last of Us Part 3 as she was in Part 2. Ali considered a lead character alongside of Abby with the campaign equally split between them. Therefore, the Twitter user is suggesting that Ali will play a pivotal role in the third installment. Shocking. 
Uh, a few of Renan's claims are unconfirmed, of course, but Naughty Dog has revealed that it has, quote, a brand new single player experience, end quote, in the works alongside The Last of Us multiplayer. Although The Last of Us multiplayer has uh, hit a shitstorm of development, according to the new Bloomberg report. Um, so, yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah. So, uh, the chat that has asked, um, so how were your thoughts on part two? It's been a while. Obviously, part two was in 2020. Um, you and I have very different thoughts on part two, but mostly That's because we played it very differently. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, we're all very lucky. We received a review code. Thanks to PlayStation Australia. We got it about a week out. Yeah. And you're like, I'm going to fucking run it in a weekend. I'm like, okay. And the short answer was the game was a lot longer than we both anticipated. So I got it done, but I took, I did not do it in a weekend. I did it. In a fucking day. Yeah, you went a week. Yeah. Because the original plan was we were going to talk about it that weekend in the show. We we're going to have, you know, we we're going to try and have something to drop at launch, ready to go. Um, at the time, my wife had graciously decided to take my kid to Ballarat for the day. I just, I just fucking went ham. I got up at like nine o'clock in the morning, yep. and I finished it at like three o'clock the next morning, and I didn't stop. I stopped to like eat and go to the bathroom. But otherwise, it was just like a fucking steaming hot gamer mess. It, it, yeah, because because yeah. you were like, I want to give this a like, I don't want to like separate it. Yeah. Where I kind of patched it off over like a couple of days. Um, um, the the game is undeniably great, but I preferred the first one, and I think it was purely for the fact that I took my time and enjoyed yeah. it more and saved it more, as opposed to just fucking gorging myself on it for for a day. Um. I I enjoyed Abby as a character. I thought her whole character arc was absolutely brilliant. Um, it did have some pacing problems overall for me, but other than that, the game's great. Looked great, played great. Um, the, the gameplay mechanical change changes that they made between one and two were uh, for the better. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, so I, I want to see it through. I definitely want to see more. Like they, they, there's definitely more stories that they can tell. And it it ended in a way that you expect to see a a, yeah. a part three, um. So yeah, it it's, makes sense. Yeah. Look, I I I fucking loved part two. It was my game of the year that year. Um, I think it was incredible, absolutely incredible. Simply because it hit a cut. One of the things I love in movies and tv like this is why i love breaking bad so much right it's consequence of action everything meant something and you know the whole premise of part two is it's consequence of action it's the past coming back to haunt you because you know and it's the idea of you know everyone's a hero in their own story everyone thinks that their that their path is the righteous one and it's you know it is i think it kind of butchered a little bit of its idea of like violence Begin, begets violence over the fucking expression is um you know because the idea is like hey you know violence just makes more violence revenge just makes more revenge but then the game doesn't force you to step away from that rev- like that violence it makes you actively contribute to it and i think it tells a very good story in that sense i loved ali as a character in this i love abby as a character in this and i think that because their motivations are so different and you know with abby we see she gets her resolve and then what does she do then? Which is really fascinating because Ellie doesn't get her resolve and the game ends with her getting it. And it's like, well, now what is she going to do? But then also what did it cost? Like we see the impact of, you know, Ellie had a moment where she could have got out, but she chose not to. Um, I think a lot of the people that had anger with it, uh, like, you know, I'm just be that guy. I think they have access with it. It actually is with it for the wrong reasons. Like it's not because the game is about empathy. Like that's what it's fucking about. The whole idea is that have empathy for those around you, the experiences of those around you. Just fucking think about someone else other than yourself. And I may find people that had that major issue with that game. Didn't pick that theme up. Not saying that they have any lack of empathy, but maybe that's not the story they're looking for in a game. Because in most games, the idea is you're the fucking hero, you're the main guy, you're the man, right? You do whatever the fuck you want, no consequence of action, you don't have to think about the people around you. Because mm. the power, like, gaming at its core is a power fantasy. 
this game subverted some of that expectation to be like, think about what you're doing, right? And what does it mean? Which I don't think a lot of people are ready for in a gaming space. Yeah. Um, and I think, and then back that with all the leaks, which were wrong. And then, you know, then a, a lot of people like from various sides got angry and it was the side that was already had issue with a, with a, I'm not saying it's as simple, simple as this, but a lot of people had issue with a female led game with a, with a you know, LGBTQI character, et cetera. So they just kind of added that to it to make it this bigger thing than it re- than it was, you know, like there are tons of female led games that are fucking mint and some of the shit too. So, you know, it's a, uh, it's a tough, it's a tough one to discuss, but like, I truly think the game was, was brilliant. Like it is like, it, what's the, the, I've heard the expression that's um, production per square inch. Right. And like that game mm. is fucking dripping. Like it is incredible. There is no game. There are very few games, even on PS5 that look as good as last of us part two on PS4 games. Incredible. It plays well. It makes you feel shit. Game's fucking awesome. Um, so the idea of a third one, yes because it ends in such a way that it makes you want and crave more like oh like, but not not like not in a revenge way but in like a what's the next part of this story mm. like it ends very empire strikes back it ends on like a down note and it's like oh shit now what do we do so i'm itching as fuck and like there's no way that they'd never want that they would never not do it but it's all about when they would do it would be the hurdle right you know but yeah it makes no it's no surprise to me that it's on the cards especially after the success of the tv show you know it depends whether with the team whether the 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 development team at naughty dog are wanting to stay within this this ip for another five six years Mm. Uh, you know personally i'm super keen i'd love to see it quick bits max so the Red Dead Rede- uh, so Red Dead Redemption for PS5 has been rated in Korea. So the question is, are we getting a remaster slash remake? I guarantee it's probably a remaster. Oh wait, Red Dead One. Uh, that's I don't know. Unsure on that one. I think. Personally. Uh, I want to, I'd fucking love to see a Red Dead Redemption remake slash remaster. That game is mint. So you want to talk about another game that is unmatched is Red Dead Redemption 2. Holy shit. Give me more of that. Give me, let me play Red Dead again. Because Red Dead for me is stuck on PS3 and I can't play it because it runs like bumhole on PS3. It just runs like crap. Absolute crap. If you've got an Xbox, sick. You can play it at 4K, 60. It's, it's, it's mental, mental good. Would you do you want a Red Dead Redemption remake? Is that remaster Max? I enjoyed it. I you enjoyed it more than I, I enjoyed it more than I enjoyed Red Dead Redemption too. <gasps> Wait, um, why? Had that, How? Because well, not as well, huge for one. Well, no, it wasn't that. It was just that because Red Dead Redemption Two is the prequel to Red Dead Redemption. You know where half, it ends. Yeah. Halfway through the game, I'm like, I know where this is going, and I lost all drive to finish it. Oh, I feel that. Yeah, I get that. Um, but prequels so, yeah. aren't all bad. Rogue One, exceptional prequel. Mm. <laughs> the only one of the three. <laughs> yep. I love the original. The four, the original yeah, I love two. like the episodes one, two, and three, but Rogue One is exceptional. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I get that. I totally get that. Uh, in a franchise first, NBA 2K24 will be cross-play. So the idea being that PS5, Xbox, wherever, Switch, <laughs> um, you can all play basketball together, which is cool because like, it's one of the things that needs to happen in these fr- in like sp- annual annualized sports franchise games is crossplay, is games as a service. Pardon me, in that you buy it once, you just buy NBA 2K, and then each year you get like a fucking season download. You can still pay your ninety bucks for it or whatever you want. This yearly bullshit is dumb. Make it a subscription based model. That's yeah, sub base model. That's what you want. Um, that should be the answer. Uh, and finally, in the quick biddies, Capcom's upcoming title, Exo Primal, uh, to receive a last showcase on the 11th of July, which is good because I fucking forgot about it. I think I signed up for the beta, but I didn't hear anything. 
I played the beta. Yeah? Do, do you think an extra showcase will help? No, I think the people who are going to play it are going to play it. The people who aren't aren't going to be sold on another showcase. Yeah, because they did mm. mislead us with the Dino Crisis and then gave us not Dino Crisis. Yeah. They pulled the old switcheroo Best in the wrong direction. Ah, well, upcoming titles. Let's see what's coming out this week. So on the 11th of July, we have Rain World Downpour coming to PS5, PS4, and The Valiant coming to PS5, PS4. On the 12th of July, we have Mordhau, PS5, PS4, Oxen. Oh, I, 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 in my head, it was Mordher. Mordher. <laughs> Oxen Free 2 Lost Signals, PS5, PS4, and Sea Horizon, PS5. On the 13th of July, we have Atelier Murray remake The Alchemist of Salberg, PS5, PS4, uh, Ed Zero Zombie Uprising, PS5, Gravity Circuit, PS5, PS4, Naraka Blade Point coming to PS5, and Operation Wolf Returns First Mission VR coming to PSVR 2. And then on 14th of July, we have the aforementioned Exo Primal, PS5, PS4. Nice. Absolutely nothing of interest there for me. Nothing jumping out to me at all. No. Cool. Uh, it is, it is. Though, I know this is a PlayStation show, for, but for those who are interested, I'm pretty sure Exo Prime was also launching day and date on Games Pass. So like, oh, Game Pass on PC. It's, it's like, yes, yeah. Oh, I'll play it on PC. If you're, if you're hedging your bets, you can go yeah. try it for the equivalent of kind of free if you. Yeah, you know, I I did jump I did jump a month's worth of uh, Game Pass for PC. I was like, hey, let's play some things. It's an excuse to play games on my PC. Oh, I got that. De- de- uh, excuse me. Like Death Stranding's on there. I was like, I want to see how pretty Death Stranding is on my PC. Pretty. You yeah. thought it looks good on PlayStation. It's fucking mint on PC. Oof. Oof. Um, anyway, but yeah, not much else. To, 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 to sh- a relatively short show this week. Quiet week. Yeah. Um. <sighs> well, everyone. Seems like a damn note. Nah, we this PlayStation conversation happens. It's, like, it's the last one's part two of endings of an episode. So it ends on a down note. Uh, this PlayStation conversation happens every Monday morning at 8 a.m. on podcast services, including Apple Podcasts and Spotify, and 9 a.m. on those YouTubes. If like to take part in future conversations with us, hopefully they'll be more exciting next week. And come and check out our socials, Facebook, Discord, Instagram, Twitter. All of those links can be found in the description below. If you want to join the conversation as it happens, head over to twitch.tv slash thepopcultures. And we can watch us record this show live. We can jump in the chat and become part of the show. If you want to support the show, you can tell your friends, tell your family about this PlayStation pod. If you are listening on podcast services, be sure to give us a five star rating and a written review. If you watch us on YouTube, be sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment below. I, I endeavor to in, in, what? I, don't know, I, I endeavor to answer every comment, I think is what I say. If you want to support us financially, you can at patreon.com slash popcultures, as well as our merchandise store, popcultures.com slash shop, where you can buy shirts and other assorted shit with our logos on it. But until next week, I'm Ryan Betson. I'm Max Cooper. And that was for the players. It was. Fuck. Fucking week news week. It's a week news week.